What the hell? Dusk exclaimed. You're leaving the band? No, I didn't say that, Luna defensively said, while continuing to fight back tears. I'm just saying I just don't like the direction our band is going, and I don't really like touring. And you saying those fans that we're going to be touring all the time was just the last straw for me. I miss the days when we're at home. Writing music as a way to express ourselves, it feels like we're just doing this for fame now, and I don't like it. And like I said at the canal, when did the, the, the fame become more important than our music? Oh, Luna, for the love of God, you're just overreacting, Dusk sighed. No, I'm not. I'm just saying how I feel, Luna promised. So you're going to leave us in the middle of our tour? Dusk exclaimed. And you're calling me a bad friend? No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not saying I've made up my mind or anything. I just want to be here for the rest of the first tour, even if I'm not going to enjoy the concerts. And I just want to talk about this with you all before making the decision. All I'm saying is a recurring thought that I'm having. Luna admitted it. Hope you can support me. Fine, at least you're not leaving, Dusk said before dropping the voice to a mutter. Drama queen. Excuse me? Luna defended. Come on, Dusk. Thorin jumped in. You're just being really pity and immature. With this behavior like this, you're going to make Luna want to leave the band. Thorne was still careful about her words in the case of the witches happened to pop in or reading her thoughts to listen to the conversation. She figured everything she was saying still went along with Bridget's orders to try to keep the band from ending. Besides, Dusk was being ridiculous and Thorne didn't even think the band would simply end just because Dusk was too tied up in her own fame to see that her friend was struggling. It was a win and win situation since Forn could say that she wanted to while still going along with Bridget's instructions. I don't need this, Dusk snapped as she walked away. We'll talk later. I don't want this dumb shit to bring me down after such a great concert. Uh, what about Bridget, Nia, and Sam, and Gus? Do we tell them I'm thinking about leaving the band? Luna asked. No, Dusk firmly said. This stays between us, and hopefully we'll have it figured out and so we'll never tell anyone. Thorne thought about saying something, but she didn't want to make it like it seemed like she was revolting against Bridget, hiding something from her. So, as to not be punished by the witches, she figured that it would be a good thing not to tell them, as it would allow her to test out whether the witches truly were consistently telling in, and knew how her meeting with Gus that went that night. Okay, however you want, Thorne said trying to remain completely neutral in the case they were listening. That sounds good to me. I'm sorry to spring something like this on you, Luna said sorrowfully. She looked like as if she was such ashamed, probably in the part due to Dusk's extreme reaction. Great concert, ready to go, girls? Gus popped by, his voice scared Forn for a moment, because she hadn't expected him to pop out in the room, and at that moment, she wondered if he had heard Luna's revulsion but she was pretty sure he hadn't. At least the people that knew this, the better. Perhaps her fury would prove more fruitful in defeating the witches once and for all. Forn dug in through her suitcase once they go right back at the hotel, searching for her pajamas. Just as she located them, she noticed something she forgot about. Everything you wanted to know about Wicca, the Wicca book her mother had given her. She hadn't remembered packing it until now, but she was incredibly happy she did. Things had gotten so busy with her album release and the touring that she neglected to read the last 100 pages of the book. She excitedly grabbed it out of her suitcase, plopped herself onto the bed mattress next to Luna. Dusk was currently in the bathroom taking a shower. Oh, that's the book on Wicca, Luna noticed. I forgot you had it. Yeah, I'm sorry about dropping that on you after the concert, Luna apologized. I forgot about it for a little while, too, but this is a nice way to unwind from the night, Forn smiled, feeling excited. And no need to apologize, Forn assured. Your feelings are valid, and your rationate totally makes sense. Thanks, Luna smiled. It feels so good to be listened to. This comment made Forn feel equally happy and sad. She was happy that she could provide the support for Luna, but sad that the comment's implication that Dusk didn't support her it was a fair remark, though, as Dusk hadn't really been supporting her lately. 
and she had been more concerned about herself and fame than her own friends. Do you f actually think you want to leave the band? Thorn asked. Of course I'll support you if you do. No, I don't want to leave, Luna confirmed. I just like the faints were before, but Dusk has gotten so caught up in fame that it feels like she lost her sight of identity as artists. Our music is about empowerment, but it just feels that Dusk is getting low power by taking it from others. She beams it whenever she thinks of how important we are now and that we're famous and acts like we're more deserving than other people. That's not the type of band I want to be in. That's not the type of band I want to be in either, admittedly, Thorn sighed. I consider it more of a Dusk problem than a band problem, though. I just think it would be different if I enjoyed touring. I really wanted to, but being up in front of those people every night is nerve-wracking to me. And I would like to sky myself up every night just to be able to handle it, Luna admitted. I guess it's just taken me a little while to get used to performing in front of all those people, too. Foreign at it, but I think I'm getting better. The concert was great. Honestly, I really enjoyed it. I'm glad, Luna smiled. I'm fine with staying in the band. I just don't want to tour all the time. And Dusk really needs to change her attitude. She's not the same person she was before the release of her first album. She's not, Foreign sighed. Both girls could hear Dusk turn off the shower of the bathroom. It feels so good to open you up to this without being yelled at, Luna stated. I'm glad we just had this conversation. Me too, Foreign smiled. It's good to know that what you're going through. And I hope that, you know, I'm here to support you. Thanks. Luna opened her arms to hug Foreign. Both the girls shared a quick hug before Dusk got out of the shower. While Luna returned to her book, The Warlock of the Weblin by W. Anfros, Foreign took out her mother's book out of the suitcase and eagerly began to read it. Perhaps she finds something that could clue cure into the witches. Foreign quickly read through the chapter about different types of witches, but unfortunately didn't find much. They listened to sea witches, city witches, plant witches, cottage witches, kitchen witches, and influence witches, and on how they were what each of them were essentially different, of a way of embodying one's truth through the geographic locations of the place that made them happy. There was a bit of tad history about Gerald Gardner, who had created the definition of the witches, of a more social construct with them being tuned into one auras and, and energies. It was rather than being actually able to cast spells, Bridget was able to cast spells though, which she knew that from when she choked Gus. The chapter went on and talked about how witches could have some visions from focusing deeply on their spiritual auras. Finally, it discussed something about finding magic on one's everyday life. The author argued that you couldn't and have to wave a magic wand or at least make someone disappear because certain things in life, such as living a rock in outer space of what I know as Earth or human connection, could be just as magical. She normally would have been fascinated by this stuff, but she skimmed it through a bit in hopes of finding something that would help her with her situation. She could feel her eyes getting very sleepy, and she wasn't finding much. It was all just stuff about how you can enhance your powers by improving your ability to focus on your spiritual energy, and how collective energy it made it stronger. Ugh, why isn't there anything that appealed to the situation? But as she went through the page, she found herself almost unable to keep her eyes open. Must. Stay. Awake. Forn woke up to the sun streaming in her window. She groggily realized her wicked book was still lying next to her arm. She must have fallen asleep while reading it. She felt frustrated with her body for falling asleep on her when she knew she was able to read the rest of the book. She probably wouldn't have time tonight since she was meeting Gus secretly again and she would most definitely wouldn't have the time right now as she needed to pack up and head down to breakfast. She just would have kept observing the witches and see what would have happened. It would have been most interesting to see the result of the last test of if Bridget, Nia, and Sam overheard Luna's revulsion. And just more intimately, her conversation with Gus while she snuck out that one night. Forn felt a rumble in her stomach. She vowed to brush her teeth and already later. She got some breakfast after, and she was going to change out of her pajamas, but realized that she had fallen asleep before changing into them. She was just about to head out the door when she heard a knock at the door. At first, she could have figured it was Dusk or Luna, just forgot their key in the room or something. 
Florin's heart skipped a beat. When she opened the door, Bridget was standing right there with a sense of urgency in her face. Sorry, but we need to talk, Bridget said, as she barged in the room without asking if she could come in. I heard your conversation with Luna yesterday. She's leaving the band, and we both know that can't happen. I know. I don't know what to do, though, Florin sighed. Dusk actually did what you told me to, and that upset Luna so much to the point she might not be able to be in the band anymore if that happened. Well, convince her that she just can't get used to touring yet. She can't just dip out on you guys in the middle of the tour. It's very important that Luna finishes this tour, Bridget said with a sense of insensity present in her eyes. She won't leave in the middle of the tour, Forn assured. she never do that to us. You don't know that, Bridget snapped. She's clearly not in the right mind if she wants to leave the, man, the band. So if she does something crazy and leaves, we can't take that chance. I need you to convince her that she it will just take her a little while for her to get used to touring. Maybe say you've been struggling with your tour too, but things are going to get better for you. Farn was a tad bit confused, as if she wasn't sure if Bridget was thinking that she could be making up that she's being on, to on the tour, or if Bridget actually read her thoughts for this. Okay, I could definitely say that, Bridget agreed. Bridget, Bourne agreed. She was much more okay with telling Luna this. She wouldn't be lying. It's something she actually felt. Good, Bridget nodded. Just do whatever you do and do not leave. Ma let her leave this band. I won't, Bourne promised. She found it incredibly selfish. But the sort of agreed to Bridget's mentality that Luna should not leave the band... Of course she would support her friend if that she really needed to. But Bridget's strong desire to keep the band alive, with all costs, was somewhat appealing to Forn. Let's go downstairs now, Bridget instructed in a commanding voice, as if she was giving orders to a dog. Forn didn't give the identity of responding. Just follow the pink-haired perpetrator down the stairs. There's to the elevator. She wasn't really so sure if she preferred Bridget weirdly talking to her, as if she had been nothing, or the silence. They were both equally awkward and terrifying, if Foran was to be honest. The trek to Chicago had been the shortest of their drives yet, only taking around four hours. Luna had offered to drive this time, presumably because she felt bad for her sudden revulsion about being unhappy in the band. She wanted to make herself useful. One of the days, Foran would have to offer to drive, since she hadn't yet. All right, everyone, we're almost there, Luna exclaimed. As she turned on to West D I D A B Wells Drive. Well, here, where's our hotel this time, Mr. Tour Guide? Sam inquired, causing Gus to blush a little. It was interesting to see how their fox relationship had still functioned a little bit in the sense, and the playful interactions that still occur from time to time. Ford was supposed it would be a little more convincing on the witch's part, but she still found it quite fascinating. Tonight, We'll be staying at the Hat Ranji Chicago. It was built between 1974 and 1980. It's a fascinating sense that the hotel is compromised between two towers, to which of them are connected sky away from an underground encourse. The hotel just recently hosted their World Science Fiction Convention back in August. So it's also home to two restaurants and bars and a game area. Gus listed off at the top of his head. If you've ever seen a roller coaster... That movie was filmed there. Never heard of it, Bridget shrugged. Oh, do we want to go eat at one of the restaurants? Nia suggested. God, no. Dusk rolled her eyes. We're not some poor bums who'd want to mooch off a hotel's crappy dinner. We're famous now. We got to explore the ta town and really found a classy piece place to eat. I hardly would have called the restaurants in the hotel's crappy dinners, Dusk. Gus challenged. They're quite nice from what I've researched. So why not just splurge a little bit? Dusk urged. If I if a fan saw a scene in some cheap like that, they probably wonder why the hell we're doing with all the money. I think you're overestimating the amount you're going to make on this tour, Gus Dusk. Gus chuckled. It's a decent amount, but you're still not gonna become Bill Gates. I'd be fine going somewhere. It's nice to be instead of in a hotel all day, Foreign suggested. Yeah, that'd be nice, Luna agreed. Oh, do any of you have good restaurants around here, Gus? Sam inquired. I'd love to go to a cute little cafe, Bridget suggested. I think I know the perfect one, Gus suggested. It just opened last year. It's called Lula Cafe. 
It's quite small, but the food is excellent, and the staff is extraordinary friendly. That sounds perfect, Bridget exclaimed. Okay, it's quite a bit of a drive. About 30 minutes from our hotel, I believe, Gus warned. And then in another 30 minutes back to the House of Blues, where you'll be performing tonight. We should have plenty of time, given it's only free. The House of Blues? That sounds like a place for jazz musicians, Sam commented. Not exactly, Sam, Gus corrected. It's actually just a chain of concert halls for all types of music, which it was opened by Dan Aykroyd. And there are a lot of them. There's one in Las Vegas, Myrtle Beach, and New Orleans, and I believe one in Florida as well. Did you say 30 minutes away? Luna exclaimed. At least we had a short drive up here. If you're still up to debate or to tour or not, the one thing you might want to consider is how much driving is involved, because there's a lot of it, Gus chuckled. Ford immediately got uncomfortable. Gus was still aware of Luna's dissatisfaction to the level of considering leaving the band. So besides feeling bad for Luna, she had to keep quiet. She was also worried that this would push the witches to more irrationally forcing Foreign to do things. It seems like they were hell-bent on carrying out whatever plan was that they couldn't possibly want to wait till the situations played. Every little detail that went on against their plan it was a challenge. As such as Luna commented briefly that she wasn't satisfied, which led Foreign bringing up to the conversation about what would have happened to one of them if they left the band, which led Dusk saying that to Foreign that was going to say anyway, and that all just led back to the witches being hyper all alert and forcing Foreign to try to get Luna to stay in the band. It felt like a never ending cycle of manipulation and cruelty. Lula Cafe was exactly from what Foreign expected. Small, cute little cafe, but not with a lot of space. A few booths and tables scattered throughout the restaurant, but the cafe looked like if it was built only to hold 25 to 30 people at a time. After going to so many big restaurants on this tour, Forn enjoyed the change of going to a small locally owned cat place. It reminded her a bit of Jack's, just like with the Broadway bar and grill they had, and they were greeted by a sweet voice that reminded Forn a bit of a grandmotherly figure. She had white hair, wore a red waitress apron. Hello there, the woman agreed it. My name's Lula, and I'm the owner of this cafe. Can I get you girls a boo for a table today? Foreign looked around her travel fan base. None of them seemed to have any preferences other than Dusk, who mouthed out boof. We'd prefer a boof, Foreign stated. Right this way, ladies and gentlemen, Luna instructed, pausing when she saw Gus. So are you from around here? No, they're not, Grandma, a feminine voice called from the back. Do you know who those girls are? They're the Hex Girls. Who are in the... Where are the Tex Girls? Are you from Texas? Lula looked confused. The person who had previously spoken out at the back revealed herself to be a young teenage brunette. She was wearing a waitress uniform and tiky pants. Not the Tex Girls, Grandma, the teenage girl laughed. The Hex Girls. They're like the hottest bands in the world right now. I can't believe you're eating in our little restaurant. I feel so special. It's very nice to meet you, Foreign smiled. Yeah, it's always wicked beating fans, Dusk exclaimed. Hi, what's your name? Luna inquired. I'm Susan, the brunette Abe replied. Well, I'll be, Lula exclaimed. I don't know how girls you were famous. Where are you from? They're from a little town in called Oak Haven, Massachusetts, Susan informed, before the girls could. Wow, you sure know about a lot of these girls, Susie. Lula said in surprise. I'm like your biggest fan. Susan turned to the Hex Girls. I've listened to your album like a jabillion times. I've ever never related on the album so much. I'm so glad you loved our music so much. Dusk exclaimed. What's your favorite song? Hmm, that's a hard one. I can't believe I'm actually talking to you guys about my favorite song on the album. Susan looked as she was in heaven. If I have to pick, it would be Earth, Wind, Fire, and Air. I'm really passionate about the environment, and you guys did a great job of making this song super empowering. Thank you, it's my favorite too, Forn responded. Actually, that's my favorite as well, Luna chuckled. Wow, really? I can't believe I have same uh, favorite as you guys, Susan exclaimed. You coming to the concert tonight? Dusk inquired. Susan's eyes lit, suddenly lit up. I am I? 
Of course I am. I wouldn't miss you guys coming to the town for the world. Anyway, I suppose I should take your order instead of just talking to you all day. Susan chuckled. No worries. We love talking to our fans. Foreign smiled. If you want, we can give you a ride to the concert. That's where we're heading after this. It may be a little tight, but I think we could squeeze you in. Susan then looked as if she was going to explode with excitement. Are you serious? That'd be my dream. That's very kind of offer to let Susie a ride, Lula complimented. How about this? If you drop her back off here after the concert's over, the meal's all seven for you guys is on the house. Wow, that's so nice of you, Nia complimented. Sure, we can do that, Gus agreed. I'm going to order a huge lobster, Sam joked. Well, we don't have any lobsters here, Susan chuckled. <laughs> We've got lots of sandwiches and salads, though. Sam, Bridget scolded. Don't take advantage of this woman's kind offer. Bridget's comment was a little bit ironic for Foreign, for obvious reasons. No, she's right, Dusk said. If we're famous, we should be getting free dinners. Might as well treat ourselves a little. I'll take the steak sub, Dusk ordered. Foreign intentionally sighed. Thus continued to value flame over being kind to other people. It seems that she thought her fame was just right at the passage, rather than something extra to supplement her already fulfilling life. This a nice old lady had been incredibly generous to give them their dinners for free, and all Thus could think about was how they could get the most personal gang out of all the deal. Foreign would be even angrier if she was to not for the witches. Everyone had joined at the splendid dinner, particularly Dusk, since she bought the most expensive thing on the menu. After the meal, Susan tagged along with them to the concert hall. The concert hall looked impressively masculine, like it seems like something of a major star would play in. It still looked foreign ba back sometimes to think that they were just about actually major stars now. The concert had multiple levels of seats, main level to balconies, each of the balconies had a fancy railings that looked like something would be in an opera house. The two pillars surrounding either side of the stage, five large palaquets running across the length from them from the stage's ceiling, and the seating in the bottom row was the auditorium style, and the rows of the seats just nearly went up to the stage. All the sounds of lighting systems also look impressive that they haven't seen yet. With so many radicals, that it made Foreign actually dizzy, trying not to trace all the different accessories attached to the ceiling. The seven had just arrived at the feeder, and they were already led backstage area by the employee. The backstage looked very specialist, with a lot of room to set up. So you guys travel around your concerts in a van? Susan asked. That's crazy. Yeah, we do actually, Foreign confirmed. It's really fun though, taking road trips and seeing a different city every night. That must be cool. Your van's really quirky, too. It looks nice for fitting a lot of people and instruments, Susan commented. It's not what I've expected, though. I thought you would be traveling in private like jets or something. But I guess I don't know much about touring and stuff. I can't see why you think that, Ford understood. I guess I thought of that before I became famous. But now that I see that fame is just a supplement of what your life is like already, fame just doesn't have to be with flashing fancy jewelry or anything. That van is just all we drove in Oak Haven, and it was the most cost-effective to drive that around when we were paying jets and stuff, which we can't afford anyway. Oh yeah, Susan then looked like she had a sudden realization. I guess fame doesn't really intentionally make you be able to do everything like society implies. Exactly, Foreign said, as her final sh thoughts shifted to Dusk's recent behavior for a moment since she was teaching Susan what fame is like. Foreign got a responsibility to educate her on what she actually felt her fame shouldn't be. Fame also doesn't replace her personality or anything, or at least it shouldn't. It should be just a small supplement of your life, and you have to keep yourself down to earth and not let fame become overly important to you. It's a nice bonus, but you can't let it get through your head. Yeah, Susan's mouth mouthed into a smile. That only makes sense. You seem like you've got a pretty good, really level head, so that only makes me to look up to you more. Thanks, Foreign responded, before Gus interrupted. All right, Susan, if you'd like, we can lead you to your seat while they set up, Gus informed. That'd be great, Susan responded. 
It was so nice talking to you, Forn. It was nice talking to you, too. Forn reappreciated. I'll see you after the concert. Hope you enjoy it. Forn waited until Gus, Bridget, and Nia, and Sam were out of sight. She felt bad for handling one of her fans over to evil witches, but she knew that they wouldn't be able to do anything in front of so many people. That's so sweet, Forn smiled. Yeah, she worshipped us, Dusk exclaimed. I'm not sure if that's taken away from us, Forn cautiously said. But anyway, do you think where the mic's at? Yeah, it's right over here. You'll have to get it, though, given that it seems that someone over here preferred that I not interact with, Dusk passionately aggressively replied. Forn simply rolled her eyes over to when processed that she was talking to Luna. I'll get it for you, Luna said in a disappointed tone. Forn thought about saying something to Dusk, about how her anger towards Luna was going from petty to obnoxious, downright cruel. She was already stressed about her things that she didn't even feel the mental energy to deal with at the moment. Between trying to make sure she leaned more towards Sally, side of herself, rather than Forn, and especially with figuring out about the witches that she had in mind, an even more frightening thought is that the witches weren't really going to sit around forever. They could all execute their plan at any time, so that Ford would have to figure out what to do, and quickly. Hopefully, her secret meeting with Gus at midnight will provide some more strategies.